half in the bag. Fuck movies. So, Mike, are you excited about the new Star Wars? <laughs> Jay, you'll have to be more specific. What new Star Wars are you talking about? They've announced a new live-action TV show, and they've also announced a new trilogy being directed by Ryan Johnson. Oh, no, I was just talking about Episode Eight, The Last Jedi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a very good movie. Very exciting, action-packed, lots of explosions and drama. And really, it's a film about family. Oh, no, Mike, you haven't seen it yet. Oh! I've forgotten all about the new trilogy ever since they told me to be excited about the next trilogy. But the current one isn't even finished yet. It's not? They announce a new Star Wars show every day. They announce a new Star Wars product almost as much as they announce that a new celebrity has been outed as a sex pervert. Are you expecting someone? Oh yeah, actually I am. He's right on time. Hi, I'm Rich McCaskey from Just Ice. What do you want this thing? Uh, let's see. Uh, how about right here? All right. Why did you order a block of ice? Jay, it's for the ice sculpture. For your gay wedding! Remember? For your and Mr. Plinkett's gay wedding! I'll just get started then. Oh, you're gonna sculpt it right now? Oh, yeah, yeah, a lot of people accuse us of uh, using mold, so uh, we started doing in-house sculpting. Yeah, ice sculpting, it's a great occupation. We even got our own union now, that we just like to call it a league. Oh, so you're like the Just Ice League. Like, like Just Ice League. Like Just Ice League, Justice League. Like if you put the two words together, it's like Justice League. Like like the Justice League. Like Justice League. Justice League. What are you going on about, kid? Well, I know. Why don't we all just talk about the Justice League? Oh, that's perfect. I just saw that movie at the theater. Don't you have to start carving your ice? Ah, no rush. This thing will stay hard for hours. That's what Brett Ratner said. <laughs> That's what Kevin Spacey said. That's what Dustin Hoffman said. That's what James Woods said. That's what Louis C.K. said. That's what Al Franken said. That's what Brian Singer said. That's what George Takei said. That's what Bill Cosby said. That's what Harvey Weinstein said. That's what Ben Affleck, Casey Affleck, and Matt Damon said. That's what said. I had a dream. It was the end of the world. It's that time of the week again. Another superhero movie. This time it's the long-awaited Justice League. A movie plagued with as many problems as it is flying demon bugs. Zack Snyder presents, along with reshoots by Joss Whedon, a mess bigger than the one left by Hurricane Whatever. In this first team-up film since Batman v Superman, Batman realizes a bad guy from a video game is on Earth to get three glowing MacGuffins. When they are put together, it'll open a portal to something bad or something. Now, Batman must conveniently find like six or seven superheroes to fight this bad guy or whatever. I, 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 I take an issue with your description of the plot. They're not trying to open a portal or, or anything. When they get the three magic boxes together, it's going to terraform Earth into the bad guy's homeworld, which is entirely different from the plot of Man of Steel. Which was? Where the bad guy has a machine that's going to terraform the Earth into a version of his homeworld. Was that bad guy a cartoon character as well? From a video game? <laughs> Close, it was Michael Shannon. So! <laughs> Uh, Rich, yeah. I'll start with you. What did you think of Justice League? Um, it wasn't as big a clusterfuck as Batman versus Superman. It's still a pointless waste of my time and life. <laughs> that's the grading curve we have to go on. <laughs> I think that's every review for this movie is, well, it's not Batman v Superman. I, I for one, loved this film. <laughs> I thought it was so bad that it was great. And I don't mean that in a schlocky way. Uh, it, was, it was like watching a Saturday morning cartoon show. Hey, 
In the great hall of the Justice League, there are assembled the world's four greatest heroes, created from the cosmic legends of the universe. It was that There's bad. There was less depth. With <laughs> less depth? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was, I mean, it feels like exactly what it is, which is a Zack Snyder film that was repurposed as a Joss Whedon film. Yes. <laughs> it's, that's ex- <laughs> yeah. It feels yeah. like exactly what it is. Well, we talked before um, about kind of picking out the, the obvious moments or scenes that were attributed to either director, and it was pretty easy to do. Yes. Um, there's the, the big action scene at the end. Uh, Batman's like, I gotta go do this thing. And he, and he has like machines and he's shooting missiles. And he's like, his, he had to shoot, I guess spoilers, he had to shoot a, a tower of, of, of weird roots that went into the sky. I didn't even know what was going on. And he had to blow everything up. And, and, and then there's the bugs flying on top of his car and they rip his car. And, and I was like, zoning out yeah. and I'm like this is a Zack Snyder, Zack Snyder. Stuff. it's hurting my eyes and then there were there was the one scene when Superman came back to life and he was bad Superman and they're all fighting him and I'm like this feels a little more Joss Whedon and then some of the funny character moments too well that that scene that you just talked about that was clearly Zack Snyder though because you could not see the CGI upper lip that was the only sequence when Superman comes back to life that I, I was kind of like okay this is interesting yeah. Like that should have been the movie <laughs> yeah. because that, uh, Superman comes back to life and he's, he doesn't know where he is. He's like discombobulated. And so all the other Justice League guys are like approaching him and they're very like cautious because they're like, we don't know what the fuck he's going to do. He's Superman. He can murder us all. And he is. He's confused and he sort of fights back. And it's like, oh, OK. There's a wonderful little moment when the Flash is, is running around him. I think that, that exact same moment occurred in uh, uh, Apocalypse. <laughs> Uh, uh, Evan Peters is running around um, Apocalypse, and then he Apocalypse is like, Ooh, you think you're faster than me? And then he realized, and he like hit him or something like that. Mm. Where Apocalypse, he couldn't out I speed didn't, Apocalypse. I didn't see Apocalypse. That's neat. That's the one. That was like the one thing I really liked in that movie, the Flash Superman look. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 When they're yeah, that when, whole sequence, and it's like, it's the sequence that has the least to do with the the plot of the movie. Yeah. It's like everything comes to a standstill for this big action scene, and it's the only interesting part of the movie. Well, it was a fun character interaction moment, and, and the reason why I say Joss Whedon is because, uh, I, and I, I don't know if I'm right on this, but I have a theory that um, that whole scene was was redone in post to be, I'm, I'm assuming it was the dead of night, and it was dark, oh. and it was miserable, and for some reason it felt different or interesting looking because it was like sunset or, or dusk or dawn or something and and yeah. and you could kind of see what was going on and it was you could go back looking. to the early trailers and see that oh. those same shots and it's much darker it okay. looks like a zack snyder then i'm right movie. so i had the, the 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 obvious feeling watching the scene where they confront superman that this as a zack snyder scene would have been a dark miserable nightmare and yeah. may, maybe even joss whedon added the little moment where the flash Kind of was running around past Superman. Possible. Like, there, no, no, you don't. There's definitely parts near the end of that sequence where you could tell that it was Joss Whedon took over because yeah. there's close ups to Superman and you can see that fucking uncanny valley upper lip. That's a new thing. Did you get that feeling from like the footage in the beginning too? With the kids oh, God. Talking well, let's, okay, let's start there. The beginning of the movie, the first shot is off putting because it's like cell phone footage of a little kid filming Superman. And it's like that upper lip, like it looks like like jelly or something. Like it's it looks so phony. And so I was like, oh God. Wait, why does his upper lip look like jelly? We should explain this. I guess in case people don't know, the Joss Whedon reshoots, uh, he had a mustache, Henry Cavill had a mustache. that he For a different movie. For right? a different movie, so he couldn't shave it. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not catching the logic here. Wouldn't it have been much cheaper for him to put a fake mustache on for his other movie than it would have been to do CGI lips. <laughs> Cause Hen- Henry Cavill, he, he might he might sense the doom for the DC cinematic universe. <laughs> he's, he's trying to sabotage. And this, he's it. trying to salvage his career with this other movie, which is more important. It costs like fifty million dollars to to CGI his lips. <laughs> I need to get a good mustache at a Halloween shop for 50 cents. <laughs> but you know what? Probably someone who worked on that other movie was like, fuck them. Yeah. Oh, sure. Don't shave the stash. Sure. It's going to fuck them over. And then someone just laughed in the background while they were molesting someone. The, the, the big indicator for the Joss Whedon stuff is Superman and the, the, the weird upper lip. 
It's like uh, the fake wig in the Fantastic Four movie where you're like, oh, reshoot. The, the lip didn't bother me that much. I, honestly, I, I, I noticed notice it every much. time, but it, it was like, we start with that and I was like off put immediately. And then we get clearly a Zack Snyder-ish opening credit sequence where we have a terrible cover of a Leonard Cohen song. Leonard Cohen, yeah. Le Leonard Cohen died last year. And then we see in this montage, we see a newspaper that has Prince, Superman, and David Bowie. And they're like, did they all go back to their home planet? And I'm like, while, while this Leonard Cohen cover is playing, on all these like dead brilliant artists. And I'm like, fuck you movie, <laughs> like immediately. <laughs> So that was off-putting. Each of us, in some way, is held back. Don't engage alone. We'll do this together. It was like the best movie 1996 ever made. It's felt so dated. Yeah, the, not, the visual effects, too. Everything about it, it felt like a TV movie of the week. Uh, uh, Steppenwolf looked like he was plucked right out of a video game, like the cutscene from a video game. I'm, all right, yeah. video game villains tend to have better designs. This was this was a, as as generic a villain as you yeah. could possibly have. Yeah, and I'm not dogging on video games. I oh. think video games. Oh no, were, I'm just saying yeah. this is so awful, Steppenwolf. <laughs> <laughs> he is so that so, we talk. You talk about the Marvel movies having uninteresting villains. I, I this this is say, DC trying to top Marvel in, in the least interesting <laughs> villain contest. At least put a guy like just. Well, that's the thing is like take Jeremy Irons and put a, a, a helmet on him. <laughs> ah, paint his face gray. Sure. At sure. least I wouldn't be like, oh, oh my god, because it, it felt like like a 1996 video game. Do you have a little more respect for the villain in Thor Ragnarok now after this? Absolutely. I Kate, felt Kate bad. Blanchett is like hamming it up and she looks cool, and this is just yeah. At like a CGI reject from a Lord of the Rings movie from 15 years ago. I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, but yeah, there was something about it that that felt just so quaint and dated. And 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 I don't know, it's like the, that the Zack Snyder like dark miserableness was kind of like kind of just sucked out of the movie a little. Did There's you see how much fucking color they had for Superman's costume? Oh, oh yeah. That thing was was radiating. They, they, they took the market research uh, to, to heart. It's uh, weird though, it's jarring. I mean, I get it. Like, oh, people don't like the dark, miserable stuff. Let's lighten it up. But there are those DC fans that liked the Zack Snyder stuff. Those people that would like defend those movies for the tone they were going for. And now they're going to see this and they're probably like, what the fuck? And so now it's like, well, now you got a, a facsimile of a Marvel movie. So I guess that's more of a crowd pleaser. Yeah, I mean, the, the crowd was clapping a lot and cheering and it was a more like, it wasn't, I remember Man of Steel and Batman v Superman were just like, it's just like, it's like a funeral <laughs> in the theater. It was just silence, you know, and this people like Superman said some lines and all the jokes are basically in the trailer, I think. And all the humor kind of comes from the the Flash, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who well, like, I found obnoxious. He seemed to be yeah. like a crowd favorite, but I don't know. It was it was like easy, easy humor. Yeah. I don't want to say fish out of water humor, but that's just sort of like. So you dress as a bat? Yeah. Well, it also well, that's weird. To the, the awkward contrast between the Zack Snyder stuff and the Joss Whedon stuff, where it's like one moment we have like a miserable, sad scene where everybody's sad about Superman being dead, which doesn't make any sense because everybody hated him before yeah. in the other movies. But yeah, like these somber scenes and then you immediately cut to the next scene and it's the Flash being goofy. Uh, is Flash a, a, a Peter Parker-esque quippy character or no? I'm not that familiar with the Flash. I don't think so. Mm. Is is Superman a, a quippy funny character? He was, he was, that was very like Joss Whedon in this too. Like every line he had when he showed up at the end was like a, like a goofy one line. I loved it. Well, it's, it's. Loved it. That was, that was kind of Christopher Reeves. He'd show, hey, I'm here to save the day now. Yeah, well, there were parts, like, at the very end. I mean, you see him take off the glasses, and he rips open right. the Yeah, so it's like, oh, okay, they're trying to make this not horrible. Yeah. And by doing so, they made it horrible. No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> like, he shows up, and he, he, he... I don't even remember, like, how 
he didn't really have a real dramatic entrance when he sh finally showed up at the end. You like, hear his voice off camera. Yeah. yeah. Everybody in the theater clapped. Yeah. Because like, they knew what was about to happen. <laughs> it's it's well, not an entrance. No, it's it not. Was, it was like, that's why I say Saturday morning cartoon show. Because it was like, the, the, you know you know what's going to happen. The, the Justice League without Superman fights Steppenwolf. And then they have that scene where everyone kind of starts failing and gets defeated. And I think Batman, the gun and, he Oh, had, I laughed. Yeah, I laughed when Bat everyone's falling down and yeah. suddenly Batman's gun just stops working yeah. for no reason. The, the, the yeah, robot, nothing else. robot man's <laughs> arm gets gets cut, you know, oh, Wonder Woman and, and the, the, the Submariner? Aquaman. They Aquaman. Aquaman. Caught under they, rubble. They rubble. Yeah, so you know, okay, I know what's coming. And, and then he's does anybody help need help beating up a creep? And they're like, yeah! We need to assemble a team so Superman can do all of the work. <laughs> Superman didn't, I, I, I was really hoping for just Superman just kind of shoop, and then Steppenwolf goes, and then Superman just punches him. <laughs> yeah. wasn't far off from that. He flies into the sun. <laughs> and then just like 10 minutes of awkward silence. And then, just stands there. And then he just, Flash was running to save the people. Nope, Superman's gonna do it. Yeah, that was a cute moment actually oh, when, sure. when they are they're both going up. The the three people that live in this town, <laughs> the Flash is is pushing their dead truck to get him out of the way of the the problems. And he looks over the and there's rest. Superman yeah. moving an entire building. Yeah. I was like, that's a cute Superman moment. Right. Yeah. And that's I, and I don't know where that came from. That's got to be Joss Whedon. Th those little moments make the movies fun. And I think the color color correction, the whatever they changed, I. I don't have miserable black, dark, smoky nightmare in my brain now. I have. Oh, they they made sure to correct all yeah, that. I yeah. have I have more of a warm, colorful kind of like, and all of them like working in in Batman's lair, like the, the the robots like doing stuff, and one guy's walking around, and it just it was such a cartoon show. That felt actually mentioning the Batcave kind of felt like a, a at least a holdover from Zack Snyder stuff. I don't know if it was Zack Snyder footage, but like. The Bat Cave is just like a warehouse. Oh, sure. And it's so bland. Like all the set design for the whole movie is just so like blah. Yeah, it's definitely an awkward movie um, because it's like, it's almost like from the perspective of like the filmmakers, like oh, we got to put together a team. Eh, who we yeah. got? Uh, Bat Batman's, I guess, been doing research. He knows about Cyborg and he knows about The Flash. And he so had it's... Lex Luthor's computer, wasn't that in Batman vs. Oh, Superman? Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah. Oh. He gets Wonder all Woman files. shows up and they get all that the really files. awkward shoehorned yes. in scene, yeah. But either way, it's like, so now he knows about all these superpowers. And like, we gotta get these people together, because uh, in the opening scene, which felt like a movie from 1994, um, <laughs> where Batman is like fighting on the rooftops. Batman is standing on the rooftop with a criminal going, Alfred, Alfred, my buddy, like, like. Yeah. <laughs> Like I am Bruce call. Wayne. I am calling my butler Alfred. <laughs> right in front. There is a criminal with an earshot. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he cares if anybody knows that he's he's Bruce Wayne. Lois Lane gets out of the car when Superman's on his rampage, and she's instantly with a cop in the shot, like just standing right next to the car. Clark! Clark! <laughs> <laughs> so much for secret identities. <laughs> Did anyone notice, before I forget, I think it was in that first Batman scene, and it was a couple other moments, because Danny Elfman did the score for this. There's a couple moments where the Batman 89 music, I think, crept in. Oh, really? Did you hear that? Oh, that's great. Well, there's not going to be a next time I watch this, so. <laughs> <laughs> not, not like the roaring, but some of the, the more melodic, oh, like, well, moody it could, stuff. It could just be a, the, that's his style. No, I mean, I think it was the actual music. I'll have to look into this, but. It would make sense. Well, it's sort of weird when it's like this mumbly Ben Affleck Batman. Yeah, whatever. But, uh, the Superman. <laughs> whatever. When, when, this when is the, the ultimate whatever movie. When the Flash whatever was fighting. Whatever would make people like it. When the Flash was fighting the Superman, they had the Superman theme came in for a second. I thought I, oh, I, I, I did that. thought I, I hear yeah. the Superman yeah. theme come in, yeah. Oh, okay. That little moment when him and the Flash were kind of like. He was okay, punching, I didn't, I didn't he notice was that one. Punching like the granite like right. monument thing. Right. Um, yeah, it crept so in. So they're really digging up everything they can to make you like this they, movie. They, they're like, yeah, yeah, shoving it all in there. That's what Kevin Spacey said. Relax, Alfred. I'll take it from here. Uh, d do I know you? The movie rises to the level of mediocrity. <laughs> like, like Batman v Superman is 
possibly the worst like big blockbuster movie of like at least the well, last nothing, decade. Nothing in that movie makes sense. Nothing makes sense. And this is so simple. It, it, like, of course it makes sense. There's nothing to it. Saturday there's, there's morning cartoon. Saturday morning cartoon, cartoon. yeah. There's one thing I don't get. Uh, help me out here, because I went to the bathroom at some point during the film. Uh, they were like in a sewer fighting, and then I go to the bathroom, and I come back, and they're digging up Superman's corpse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, oh, yeah. How I, did that happen? I mean, I knew Superman was going to come back. I did not expect them to literally dig up his dead corpse. That was awesome. <laughs> it was so they, weird. They, they realized or guessed that the, the mother cube would have the power to resurrect his corpse. Yeah. Okay. They're just like, I, that'll probably work. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's I was a super thinking, powerful cube. Yeah. Why I, wouldn't it work? And, I, <laughs> and then they have to go to the Krypton ship. Yeah. And then they need like a burst of electricity to, to like spark the thing off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it needs to happen right when the cube hits the water. So they're like, Flash, There's you no do this. Reason why. And we'll time it. Well, I was thinking like they have it like this slow mo dramatic scene as the Flash is coming towards it. He has to touch it with his electricity powers right when it hits the water. And I was like, if he doesn't hit it right at the exact moment, can't they just do it again? Right. right. Rich, I thought your question was going to be, why didn't Batman bring a bunch of that powdered kryptonite? <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> he dies again. I thought that might happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what you missed, Rich. They realized they, could, they might be so able... So they, they literally just said, hey, let's bring Superman back to life. More or less. I don't think anybody knew what was going on. <laughs> They're like the 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 robot, Mr. Robot, Cyborg. Cyborg. Cyborg said, "I got a cube. My dad has the cube in his lab." Miles Dyson has the cube. Miles Dyson. He's still doing work in scientific laboratories. <laughs> I don't know how much longer I can hold this. Uh, Miles Miles Dyson has the cube, and it's it's a weird thing, and it turned me into a cyborg. So maybe has the power to, to resurrect okay. Superman. But okay. we have to put him in special Kryptonian water. And Why? I don't know. They submerged him in water. Because oh, Krypton. That, that was Aquaman's job. He, he put the, the Because he's the, the water, water guy. <laughs> and, um, uh, and then, the, yeah, the Flash electrocuted the cube and brought Superman back to life. Okay. Yeah. I guess Kryptonians don't rot either. Like I, I was waiting for the bad guys to, to take Superman's corpse and turn him into their ultimate weapon. You called it. You said Superman would wake up and he'd be a bad guy at first. The Justice League yeah. would fight Superman. That should have been the whole fucking movie. Yeah. It really should. Like you can't have Superman be a bad guy. That's why they didn't do it. But that that brief moment when they were all like nervous when he comes back to life, yeah. you I was know, like, this is an interesting idea. I would watch a movie about this. laugh every time they're just standing around together in their costumes don't they just look so goofy yeah well it's it's and that's again i think a hold a holdover from the zack snyder stuff is like he has a very specific way he designs the look of his movies yeah and the suits are made to fit that look that lighting that color grading right and so when you take that footage you tweak all the colors, change it, up the brightness, then it doesn't, they all look unnatural and silly. You're saying so is like, they flat out need, everything needs to be redesigned. Yeah, yeah, like if you're, and that would require reshooting the whole movie. Oh, sure. Instead of just reshooting however much they did, half of it. But yeah, I mean, there's a moment near the end, I, I leaned over to you where it's, they're all standing there, it's after they defeat the bad guy. And it was a wide shot. And I was like, is that even Ben Affleck in the I'm suit? Not of ben. It didn't look like his face. But yeah, it's like his suit especially, it's just like in broad, in bright lights, it's just like all these awkward little patches, yeah, yeah. like little fake squares that are supposed to be abs. And it's like in a, <laughs> in a moody, contrasty, <laughs> Zack Snyder-y lighting, I can picture what that would probably look like, what that was intended to look like. Yeah, that's why they look, they look comic booky and silly and cartoony in his, in the Batcave. Like yeah. all these characters just kind of hanging out. It's just like fluorescent lights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just, it just, but, but I think that was like, I think that's the charm for me. Is this like, like I don't want to take these characters seriously. I don't want to. I don't want Moody. I want terrible. That's why. I, <laughs> that's why I enjoyed the Apocalypse movie so much. So um, you're saying you enjoyed it, just like Apocalypse. You enjoyed it ironically. Yeah, I think so. I think you so. want I maximum cheese. I like cheese. I love it, 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 in superhero movies. Sure. There, there is that very, very fine line where it can work. It, like X-Men 2. Yeah. Like where 
it's it just can barely make it into that little zone. I think the Winter Soldier. Yeah, there's does a, really there's well. a couple of exceptions, yeah. um, but then you like you have things that fall flat on their face on either side, and this one fell flat on its face on the cheese side, and and I enjoy that. Well, it's like what you said, I think, uh, about you'll wonder how fans of Batman v Superman will take this new movie because obviously if the tone the tone is dramatically different yeah and and it feels well, and Superman lighter. feels like a different character yeah. he feels like Superman yeah he doesn't feel like Zack Snyder's version of Superman anymore there's much more humor in this there's more color there's I mean it's a stupid plot yeah but there, it, it's an attempt to make a Marvel movie it's it's more Marvel-ish yeah. than Batman v Superman so if you have those really hardcore you know it's like it's like when Metallica went alternative. <laughs> do, you, do you remember that when, when they when they cut their hair and then everyone called them Alternica? <laughs> this is going way back. Somebody remembers this. Um, and and they, they their sound changed a little. It wasn't like Master of Puppets. It's like it yeah. was it was like. Ooh, yeah, and like they were doing the 90s alternative thing. And the headbangers were pissed off. So it's kind of like that conversion from, yeah. from the Zack Snyder movies to the, the, the Marvel style. So some, some people may not like it, um, but the audience seemed to enjoy it all around us. Yeah, a lot of so, clapping, a lot of laughing. Yeah, it's, it's that, you know, you're throwing them treats, throwing treats to the dog. Yeah. Oh yeah, this, this feels like it was it was specifically like scientifically tested to get the best possible audience reaction. Yes, because Warner Brothers is desperate. That's been clear. That they're constantly doing whatever they you know. I mean, re-editing Suicide Squad and and trying to to reshape Justice League <laughs> well into production of it. Oh, it's, when it's, Batman v Superman got such a bad reaction. It's blatantly obvious they don't have a plan. Yes, exactly. Everything, everything Marvel's done. Kevin Feige, Fiji, Fijo, Feige. Feige. It's Feige. Feige. He, that man has a vision, and he knows what movie is going to lead into next, and what that's going to lead into. Right. Like, like what they did with Superman. Like, you kill him off in Batman versus Superman, just so in this movie, someone can say, "Ah, let's use his box to bring him back to life." <laughs> that's all that the death of Superman led to. Yeah. What a fucking waste. We where's can't. the where's the funeral? Where are the government agencies arguing like who gets possession of Superman's body? And then it's the stand down like the the, the family the, the the public wants the burial, but no, we need to do testing. The, the, how do you plan his funeral? How do the pair? All this interesting shit you can do with the death of Superman. Uh, that box brings him back. I don't know. <laughs> the rich they have to stop Steppenwolf. They have to stop the the. <laughs> The non-character from doing the generic uh, just w evil world thing. They have a plan, Jay and Rich. They have a plan. Clearly Ben Affleck's coming back as Batman. <laughs> it's not like they're doing two separate Joker movies played by two separate actors. It's not like they've lost three directors on the Aquaman movie. Yeah, they're doing a standalone Joker movie that's outside of the cinematic universe. What? Starring, <laughs> what? Starring like Leonardo DiCaprio or something? <laughs> I think that's root word, but I doubt that'll happen. Okay. But yeah, a, a movie that has no connection to the rest of them, and then another Joker movie starring Jared Leto. Are you kidding? No. This will probably won't ever happen because they're constantly changing their plans. Yeah. But. Th okay. Yeah. They clearly have no one in charge. You can name the, the Kevin Feige. 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 <laughs> However you say his name, uh, you, uh, we'll call him Kevin F. Um, you can say Kevin F. He's in charge. You can say Kathleen Kennedy. She she's putting out Star Wars like a pimp puts a hooker out on the street. <laughs> Star Wars has hiked up its skirt. <laughs> And it's given BJ's and handies <laughs> for a, a nickel a pop. Uh, and Kathy's counting the money in a dingy hotel room. <laughs> and that's my best analogy. Um, so you know she's in charge of Star Wars. You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. you, you, you got, and then DC is just like, that's what DC stands for. Don't care. <laughs> we don't care. I don't recognize this world.
You don't have to recognize him. We just have to save him. It does feel like a movie where there's a good like hour and 45 minutes missing. Oh yeah. Where there's just like, they just like chop this down. To well, that was, that was I think minimum. a studio mandate, keep it under two hours. Yeah. Because Batman v Superman was just so like bloated and yeah. ugly. And, yeah. and it had, uh, this movie has a little bit of the same problem that that one had, which is like that movie, it was just like scenes. Mm. And there was no, no like sort of connecting tissue or like, it's just sort of like you could move, rearrange them. Mm -hmm. It would make very little difference. Yeah. There's a little bit of that in this. Like, like I was thinking like that scene early on where Lois Lane's at work and, and uh, Ma Kent comes and oh, visit her. Yeah. And it's like, what is this? It's like, you could move that scene anywhere. Yeah. It would make no difference. The, the Lois Lane angle has always been super weak and pointless. Yeah. Um, and there, yeah, a couple moments like that, but really like they stripped this down and just said, okay, Bad guy. Open with Batman, uh, um, creature of the night, vampire <laughs> space bug attacks Batman. He's he's alerted to plot. <laughs> this is something big. There's some bad stuff coming. Gotta I, assemble a team. Yeah, it was weird and, to me that he goes and visits Aquaman before he talks with Wonder Woman about the cubes, because there's the three cubes, mm. and there's like the, the Wonder Woman people, they have one, the uh, Atlanteans have one, and then one's on Earth. But no, I'm just saying it would make sense, like if, if Batman went and visited Aquaman and tried to get him to join the team after he found out that the Atlanteans had one of those cubes. Mm. As it is, he just kind of goes and visits him for no real good reason. Well, he needs a, a team. Yeah. Sure, but it's like, oh, the Atlanteans have one of these cubes. Maybe they know what's going on with the situation. I'll go down there and investigate. Oh, Aquaman, come join our team. Did Batman know about the cubes at that point? Uh, no. No. When he okay. went to see Aquaman, he didn't. Yeah. So that's he, why it just felt like a random scene. Yeah. When? Why did he notice the cubes in the first place? Then? Why did he find those odd? Who? Batman. When he saw the cubes in the thing. Oh, because when <laughs> when the when the space bug <gasps> melted. Oh, in the, the space bug melted and for left no cubes. reason he left a cube. Three cube impression, like a tattoo on the wall that he died. Why does the bug have cubes on its back <laughs> representing the mother boxes? So, so that Batman would know about them. So that he could leave a clue for Batman. Were they just exhaust ports on the bug and just coincidentally they happened to resemble the cubes? Yeah, that's it all it It could be takes. with the, the bug's whole, whole sole purpose of existing is finding those three cubes. So its essence okay. was burned into the wall. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> That's why this felt like a shitty cartoon. <laughs> because that, that was the opening scene, and it was it was straight out of the 90s. It was like a Joel Schumacher movie. But yeah, so so it's like, yeah, the, the bare minimum. Get the team together. There's a little like a little cute dialogue back and forth with the bare minimum. Bare minimum. Bad guy, he's bad guy because he has the big horns and his face <laughs> looks like a demon. And he the three MacGuffins. We'll put the three MacGuffins together. I guess it wasn't opening a portal. Rich says it was terraforming the planet into monster world. <laughs> they, they were gonna turn the they were gonna turn the Earth into a, a, a an apocalypse world. Okay, okay. yeah, that's fi that's fine. That's bad enough. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the bad plot. The three magical MacGuffin cubes will turn the planet into a nightmare land. We gotta stop them. We'll get them together. And then I guess. We, they tried fighting Steppenwolf. They got their asses kicked. So then they decided, let's bring Superman back from the dead. Let's literally dig up his corpse. I guess a magic cube will do it. Um, <laughs> oh, I, I laughed when they left the magic cube they had unattended after rescuing <laughs> Superman. <laughs> they turn around and the, comically you see Steppenwolf zoop, just going up the tube zoop. with the, the cube they left. And they're just like, oh. You gotta get to the next next plot point somehow. Rich. <laughs> it was just yoink. All he needed to do is he needed to say yoink as he was going up the tube with the box. Where did he go when he wasn't like tubing around the world? <laughs> so just like he's waiting in his trailer till the next scene. He's just had a Holiday Inn, or what's he doing, Rich? <laughs> I don't know. I I honestly have no fucking. He's idea. at the Radisson. <laughs> Kind of just waiting until someone leaves a mother cube unattended. The Radisson in hell. Yeah. Yeah, he was right on that cube the second they turned away from it. How did he know? He got lucky. <laughs> the, script, the script said the bad guy needs to get the thing now. We, need, we needed a series of scenes of him like in the background, like looking. Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. Just peeking around. Just peeking around, around for it to be unattended. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yoink. <laughs> didn't, didn't the movie end with like the, the Aquaman saying something like that? He went like, bitchin' or like... Oh yeah, it's some stupid line. <laughs> what did he say? It wasn't bitchin', but it was something like, like that. Yeah. It was something. Cowabunga. Yeah. Bodacious. Bodacious. <laughs> he said something. He uh, said a thing. <laughs> it literally made my skin crawl. <laughs> it made the audience go wild. Yeah. Yeah, that was classic. He did a thing that's fun! <laughs> It's fun! It's a Marvel, it's like a Marvel movie. I hate Marvel movies, but I love this now that it's like one. <laughs> what are all the internet trolls gonna do? They're just gonna go cross-eyed. Their fucking heads are gonna explode. <laughs> How many of you are there? Not enough. Do you really think that... Oh, wow, they just, they really just vanish. Huh? Oh. That's rude. So, Mike, would you recommend uh, Batman v Justice League? I would recommend the Justice League. Um, Superman! Uh, because it wasn't... Well, I guess I'm recommending it on the basis of, of the previous DC films. Batman. If you were turned off majorly by all the previous DC films, this one has a little ray of hope. Uh, well, the, with the exception of Wonder Woman, which was a funner movie, too. Yeah. Um, but there's some cute moments, and most of, the, most of the humor comes from what was in the trailer. So all the jokes are pretty much spoiled already. Yeah. But um, just for that little fun scene when they fight Superman, there's, there's some nuggets in here. And it, 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 it was just terrible enough to where I think I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I, I judge movies on whether or not I'm miserable. No, the, 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 the movie, admittedly, is a step up from Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, but it's still, it still does nothing for me. It's, it's still it's a waste of my time. It's, it's a horrible movie where nothing interesting happens. Yeah. There's, some, there's some goofiness, uh, some cute things. Just, just go to YouTube and watch the scene where Flash discovers that Superman is as fast as he is. <laughs> and you've seen everything that's interesting in the movie. The best part of the movie. Yeah, I'm kind of on the same page. Like, I, I don't know. It worked for the audience we saw it with, I guess, because they were laughing a lot. But, like, the comedy relief stuff, like, I didn't find that funny. Uh, the the action stuff I thought was boring. Well, it felt tacked on, the comedy one line. Well, that's because it no, literally sure was. Sure they are. Yeah. yeah. I want to amend that slightly, too, because I did like the Wonder Woman scene in the opening, which is why I thought they added that on later, because I oh, liked it. Oh, maybe. Well, she has to deflect the bullets to it's, save it's the It's quite possible, because yeah. Wonder Woman was so much more of a like a hit than I think people were expecting. Right. Yeah. They're like, oh, fuck. We Wonder need, Woman has, another Wonder she Woman has scene. nothing to do in this whole fucking movie. Let's give her this. Yeah. <laughs> It wasn't horrible, like I wasn't miserable sitting through it, but there's just was like nothing to it. So that's a no for me. Go go find the Saturday morning like Dungeons and Dragons cartoon or something. Something with a little bit more depth. <laughs> yeah. So the question is, are they going to make a Justice League 2? Well, I don't know, because like Ben Affleck seems to really be trying to get out of these movies altogether. Yeah, it would be um, so weird if there was a different actor playing Batman. Yeah, yeah. Well, they have to do more, because you know, you've, you've done Steppenwolf, and he's one of the new gods, and the, the big DC villain is Darkseid. Mm. Whew! Oh boy, is it hot in here, or is it just me? Oh, it looks like we talked about Justice League for so long that your ice block melted. Well, shit. That's too small to have him carve what I wanted. I was hoping for either a giant erect penis or maybe a beautiful swan. Now he can't do anything with that. Here you go, I made a flower. That'll be $4,000. <laughs> <laughs>